Okay guys, I think this is the ultimate how to be basic video because it is accumulation of everything. So sit here and watch. And before I get started, I actually want to go back to the group term of how it even got started and what it means to be how to be basic. I have already written this in my description box. I leave it in all my description box, but somehow people loosely translate it and kind of form their own opinions. But this is what exactly how to be basic means. So you heard it from here. And I'm just gonna read it because that's the accurate description of the video series itself. So how to be basic was started as a very loose title that was meant to poke fun at the term basic and what it means to be one. The term basic in this video is still rooted in the definition of forming an essential foundation. However, how to be basic is more so about being a conscious consumer and what it means to own things that you will use often. And it is not defined by how many does it take to be basic. It is a process altogether and what is needed will mean different things to different people. Watch the series grow as I navigate and share what it means. So that's exactly what How To Be Basic is. And we are gonna go to the video that I'm gonna talk about today. I'm going to be discussing how I manage everything that I own. And I'm gonna break it down into three parts, the what, the how, and the why. And if anyone is interested in these three sections, I'm going to be breaking it down. You can just skip ahead. It is gonna be a video that I'm just gonna be talking most of the time, and I'm gonna pair it with visuals. So I'm gonna talk about the what it is and what I do to manage my inventory system, first. So what exactly do I do? I have created an inventories for every single thing that I own and I have two systems in place for it. I have a Sortly account and I have a Pinterest account. So in the Sortly account, I have included different categories for all the different things that I own so that it's easier for me to navigate around it. And each folder contains the items that I own for that category. So in the items, what I like to do is include the picture of the item, a description, a title, of the name of the product, when I have purchased it, and possibly a little description of when it expires, the price of the item, anything regarding like how it's made is all in the description in case I wanna sell it. So I can see how long it has lasted if I decide to sell it, donate it, or if I finished using it. And moving on to my Pinterest account, it is a carbon copy of it, except I don't actually include the price for every single thing because I just feel like it's not very relevant because prices do change, they fluctuate, and also sometimes the item does fit out. I don't think that's very important. I usually include the description of the item, the name of the product, and the link to the item because it is a public list. And I do a Pinterest list and a public list because a lot of people are curious about the things that I buy and they also want to purchase it because it's good. And I also feel like it is authentic way of kind of sharing the things that I own and helping people understand the products that I actually use. So that is the what of what I do essentially. And now I'm going to move into the how. So how exactly did I go about doing the system? Well, I worked on the smallest collection of items that I had and that was makeup. So within my makeup itself, I broke it out into like different types of makeup. So I had face, I had eye products, I had blushes, I had highlighters. All of these things were broken down into different sections. But one of the advantages of doing this is moving forward when you wanna buy something, you're like, oh, is it worth it for me to enter or plug it in? And also one of the greatest advantages of this whole system was I was able to kind of further declutter the things that I don't use. So if you guys are looking for a system that will force you to actually get rid of some of the things that you don't wanna use, this is a great system. I worked on it bit by bit, just like anything in life, working on it in little chunks will help you get to the ultimate goal of curating everything. For the Sorely and Pinterest, I did put it into categories. So I have different categories for different types of things. And then for the Pinterest, what I wanted to do was kind of create a system of things that I do finish or things that I decide to get rid of. So I have a whole 2021 folder where every time I finish a product or every time I decide to sell or I get rid of it, it all goes into that folder. So for example, I have a bunch of makeup products and I have sectioned it from S to D and S meaning the best 
ND, meaning I probably wouldn't purchase it again. The sections I have created for each of these products include the grade that I gave it, whether I finished a product or not, the number of times I've actually purchased it, would I buy it again, and would I recommend it? I feel like it is a sh very short and quick version to help people who are looking at my Pinterest account know what product is worth it in my opinion and what product is not. But overall, this process has really helped me kind of filter out the things that I don't want to use. And that's really how I filtered and decluttered more stuff. That's the how. Speaking of organizing, there are some things that I purchased on Lazada that really helped me manage my inventory and keep everything in an organized matter. And I'm gonna share three items with you that really helped me organize my things. The first one is this bag organizer. You can use it for kitchen, you can use it for other things. It's really multi-purpose, but I use it to put my swimsuits. And the reason why I wanna do that is because I want like a grab and go system. So I simply just pick it up, put it in my bag. And even if it gets wet when I go swimming, it's okay. So that's a little bag and it's like a little pouch. It's really silicone based bag. It's really nice. And you can see the contents and you can also see the type of swimwear you are wearing. The second item that I want to recommend is this hair tool organizer. If you have any tools that you want to kind of separate, but make sure that it looks clean and organized, you can utilize that. And another thing that I'm going to recommend is our super systems. It is something that I use to organize my drawers. I like to make sure that our things organized organized on the outside, but also on the inside. And that really helped me manage my inventory and what was inside my, let's say makeup or skincare. And now I can visibly see everything. You can see some examples here of what I've done inside to my own skincare and hair care and makeup drawer. So those are the things that I recommend and click on the links in the description box. If you want to purchase any of these items, Lazada is having its 12-12 sale. It's the ultimate sale of the year. Everyone looks forward to this. It's free shipping. You don't need to have a minimum order amount. It's free shipping for all it's the ultimate time to get anything you want to stock up on any gifts that you want to give and it's very very fast in delivery and you will not be disappointed anyways that's it don't forget to purchase things on Lazada for this 12 12 sale it is the mega ultimate sale of all time and let's continue with the video and now I'm going to move on to the why. So why exactly have I gone about doing it? So my How To Be Basic series, as I've mentioned, is all about kind of curating my items. I wanna be able to be the ultimate curator of things that work for me and that things that I will actually use. A lot of people mistake my videos for being about minimalism. I've never acknowledged that I'm a minimalist person. I've always said that How To Be Basic and the whole video around it has always been about curating the things in my life and being a better consumer. Well, minimalistic is a very, very broad term because it could mean just owning a couple of things, but not too much. So it varies in meaning to different people. Creating a system in place is a great way for you to become a conscious consumer. And it's also a great way to understand how you purchase, the patterns of your purchasing, and the mistakes you make along the way. There are definitely things that I've purchased in 2021 that I shouldn't have, but it's all about like, like understanding how you purchase and kind of the thinking behind it. This is really intense. I feel like I'm a very intense person. So this is not for everybody, but I'm sharing my process because maybe you can do some form of it. Starting something is better than doing nothing about it all. It's really about the journey and how you get there, right? Because you're gonna make mistakes along the way. The reason why I wanted to do this was that it gives me a great visual of the things that I own and a good way for me to gauge at how I will continue building and buying the things that work for me. And it's very eye-opening because we realize where did my money go? That's exactly where it went. And of course, everything I've said in this video is easier said than done. You have to kind of remember to manage your expectations and understand that it is a process. You're not going to get it done in one sitting unless you have laser vision focus. So how exactly can you get started? I recommend that just to start out with like five items in anything that you were interested in and then work from there and build from there. I hope that this 
interested you and this helped you kind of give you an idea of what you could do. And I hope that this helped you in any way. If you do have any questions, comments, or suggestions, don't forget to ask in the comment section down below and I'd be happy to answer it. But that's it for my video and I will see you guys next time.